Welcome to the College Funding Secrets Student Loan Video Series, video number three, Grad Plus Loans slash Direct Loans for Graduate Student Borrowers. So let's look a little bit at what the actual requirements are for Grad Plus Loans. So first of all, your graduate student borrowers the loans are only available to the actual student. They are not available to their parents. They will be only in the student's name. In undergraduate, that's obviously different, as we've discussed before in the Parent PLUS loan video prior to this. Parents can borrow in the name of their child under their own names as a Parent PLUS borrower, but when it comes to graduate school, graduate student borrowers are independent of their parents and their names will be the only ones that are on those loans. So your graduate students must be U.S. citizens or at least eligible non-citizens. Your graduate borrowers uniquely must have already exhausted their eligibility for other federal student aid, such as undergraduate maximums on direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans. So basically what this number two uh, eligibility requirement is that it means that your graduate student borrower must have already borrowed the maximum undergraduate level of $27,000 before they can access graduate loans. And those are the subsidized and unsubsidized loans. So if your graduate borrower has only, gra uh, has only borrowed $20,000 during their undergraduate education, then they would still have that additional $7,000 left to borrow on these unsubsidized or subsidized loans first. And once they've maxed, maxed out that $27,000, then they would have access to the Grad Plus loans. This actually is a better scenario for the Graduate Plus borrower, the Graduate Student borrower, because these loans are at substantially different interest rates. And if they are, if the Graduate borrower is considered an independent student, which most of them are, they would probably have access to the unsubsidized loans because their income levels would be low or zero. All right, so number three, the loan amounts that are available to graduate student borrowers is up to the cost of attendance as determined by the college. And there is no annual loan limit on this. It's simply what the cost of attendance is determined by the college. And that can include their tuition, all their housing and food expenses, that's all included in the cost of attendance. And each college determines what their cost of attendance is. So depending on where you are in the country or whether you're in a rural or an urban area, your cost of attendance is going to be determined by the college according to the cost of living in that area. Now, uniquely, grad students are, are considered independent. So let's look at our FAFSA form. So they have to submit their FAFSA form, but their parent income is not required. So the situation with grad students is that they, if they start their grad school, let's just use an example. Say in the spring semester of their senior year of college, they are considered an undergraduate student. On their FAFSA form, their parent income was there. Uh, everything, they're only allowed to take out that maximum of $27,000 and then they graduate in May of that last spring semester of their senior year and say in the summer they begin their graduate program as soon as they get that graduate as soon as they get that undergraduate degree they have to resubmit the FAFSA form as a graduate student the parent income is not required anymore and suddenly the maximums on that $27,000 that was simply for undergraduate now their graduate loan um, availability and eligibility is exactly the same as the Parent PLUS loans up to the cost of attendance. So they go from, <laughs> they go from being, a, being a dependent and not having access to hardly any money to being independent at the grad level, and it could be in a matter of two or three weeks, and they have access to all of this money. So this is not necessarily always the best situation because some students uh, may still may still not be as responsible with money. So it is a good idea to have um, a parent helping with this or at least to have the student make sure that they are including in their housing and food expenses just what is necessary for actual housing and food. 
typically the cost of attendance of the school will help determine that, but it's always good to have somebody else who's, who's, you know, has some financial experience look at these numbers. So your student borrowers for graduate school have access to all of the available income-driven repayment plans and forgiveness plans when they actually do graduate. So depending on what their graduate degree, how, many, how long it is, say it's for an MBA or for a teaching degree, master's degree, those might be for one, two, or three years. If it's for a medical school degree, this, um, the amount of time that they are considered a graduate student may be for six, seven, or eight years. So it just depends. But at the time that they actually graduate, then they have available to them all of the income-driven repayment plans and forgiveness plans uh, that the they have that the undergraduate students have available to them. It's different than what the Parent Plus borrowers have available to them, but the graduate student borrowers have all of the programs available.